Esperance, a holiday resort par excellence. It's a remote town located in the southeast quarter of Western Australia, and it takes a while to drive there. It's said to have the best beaches in Australia, and they are impressive, and it's been voted as number two tourist town. The town's population is, I guess, about 20,000 people, well spread out along the Southern Ocean. There are many cycle routes and walking trails in Esperance, and walking is heavily promoted. It's a very scenic town and there's a lot to see when you walk. The center of the town is graced by large Norfolk pines planted in the early 1900s. My name's Don and I stayed at the Esperance Seafront Caravan Park during my one week stay in Esperance. My first stop was the Visitor Center. Esperance once advertised itself as the Goldfields Port, and it presents itself as a very attractive place in the tourist literature, ahead of such country towns as Broome and Margaret River. Twilight Beach in the upper right is a stunning place to visit, as is the museum in the bottom left. Near the museum is a stunning little park, which is described in the bottom right window. As you can see, the beaches are impressive, but there are strong and cool winds on the Southern Ocean coming from the Antarctic. Sammy, the sea lion, lives at the tanker jetty and is always looking for scraps of fish to eat. He's a major entertainment for the tourists. Walks along the sandy beaches during the orange and crimson sunsets are a memorable experience. There had to be good fishing off the tanker jetty and lots of fishermen take advantage of this. Timbers of local jetties have been salvaged by local residents and graced the front of their properties. The Salmon Beach Wind Farm was Australia's first and was connected to the power grid in April 1987. Housing businesses and services in Esperance. There's very little pioneer housing left in Esperance except for a small heritage precinct set aside as a shopping area. Esperance today is a city of modern houses, often in the half million dollar range, as you can see in the bottom left box. The top two boxes detail services in Esperance. The bottom right box looks at the central business district with its graceful Norfolk pines. Esperance has a wide variety of shops, including a few shopping malls. There's also an incredible variety of hotels servicing this tourist community. Services for the community are elaborate with prosperous looking buildings. There's a lovely library. The Esperance Shire is a large and ultra modern building. the police station, and an active yacht club. The Civic Center is impressive. Let's look at some of the modern houses in Esperance in the top right box. The biggest houses overlook the ocean, as one might expect. This house is advertised for 600,000. Esperance has been described in a national survey as the second most desirable city in Australia. It's rapidly growing. The climate is windy and cool. Thanks for joining me in this quick tour of Esperance. Esperance, the development of a railway and harbour facilities. During the 1890s, Esperance was the Goldfields port 
and holiday resort area. Although the railway reached Kalgoorlie in the mid-1890s, there was no railway to Esperance in spite of repeated requests to the government. Esperance declined drastically to 300 people until the railway was built in 1925 from Esperance to Salmon Gums to open up the agricultural area and then on to Norsemen in 1927. The completion of the railway once again made Esperance an important port. Sadly, there is no rail service to Esperance today, although there is a heavily used freight line. The first rail line went through the center of Esperance to the Customs Building, which is now the museum. The opening of the tanker jetty in 1934 serviced by the railway. It replaced the Esperance Bay jetty built in 1858 and the Newtown jetty built in 1903. The tanker jetty was a lengthy and substantial affair, with part of it remaining today. It became the center for wheat exports for the region and was regularly visited by cargo ships. A 1953 map showing the location of the four jetties in the Esperance area. And the main line through the center of town to the museum. The last tanker to unload about fuel at the jetty was in 1977. Bulk fuel tanks were built at the end of the jetty and are there today. They are serviced, of course, by railway. In the mid-1960s, a land-based wharf was built for the export of grain, fuel, and minerals. A second landback berth was constructed in 1972 and a third in 2002. The construction included large wheat silos and large warehouses for the storage of minerals. A commercial jetty for the fishing fleet was built in 1976 and extended to 1980. The railway also services wheat bins on the north side of town. And the railway station can be seen on the left side of the aerial photograph. The extensions to the harbour can most clearly be seen in these two photographs. The Esperance Port Authority operates the port to export primary produce. The mining industry exports nickel, iron ore and granite, while the farming sector exports barley, wheat, oats, lupins, peas and canola. It imports to Esperance include raw materials for the farming and mining industry, including petrol, phosphate, urea, copper, zinc, monoammonium phosphate, and other manufactured fertilizers. imported from Kulanavi by regular freight trains to the large warehouses. Once unloaded, it's loaded by conveyor belt onto freighters to be shipped mainly to China. Until recently, then, was also mined near Waiduna in um, the Dianora area and shipped by road train. In the summer of 2007, 
Large numbers of birds were poisoned in the Esperance area. It was found that lead dust was the contributing cause. Inve investigations revealed that lead levels in humans in the port area were also elevated and court cases resulted. Lead shipments from the port have been terminated. The last shipment was in May 2009. However, pollution in the area is still a major concern.